Climbing on sore tendons is inevitable. The harder the climbs get, the more crimpy they are. You may start grip training and it's likely you're going to start noticing a soreness in your hands while you're climbing. For me, this was waking up in the morning and picking up a cup of coffee and noticing it, it hurt. And then like pinching this A2 tendon and it was really tender to do so. This was an indication for me that something was wrong. And when I looked it up, I Googled it. There wasn't that much information out there. Uh, there was a lot of the same information, I should say. There was a lot of people saying, stop climbing. And there wasn't really anything about what you can do to actively recover from a sore tendon. It's definitely a topic that has been kind of ignored. Um, you know, I've been climbing for 40 years and so people didn't ever talk about this stuff until they got an injury. Um, yeah. But of course, if you can uh, inform people ahead of time and, and you can be proactive, um, it doesn't reduce your risk to zero, but you can reduce your risk. Part one in the three part series, all about tendons and climbing. In this video, we're going to go through the science behind your tendons and what you need to know to make sure that you're recovering and improving your tendon strength as safely as possible. Of course, this was all made possible by a great interview with Eric Horst. I saw a video that he was doing on his Training for Climbing channel and reached out to him for more information. He's definitely one of the leading spokespeople in this space, as well as the author from Training for Climbing, one of my favorite self-training climbing books. I, I don't think is well understood by most people, and even some coaches don't quite you know, aren't familiar with the science of it, but tendons are comprised of water and collagen. Uh, and so the collagen fibrils in the, in, in the tendons and ligaments degrade slightly, they weaken. There's things called cross links in there that help kind of cross brace the, the collagen fibrils and add stiffness to the system. And those connective tissues, just like muscles, kind of are weakened a little bit, are disturbed a little bit, from training, from climbing, uh, and then given rest and proper nutrition, they remodel into becoming stronger and more aligned and denser and uh, eventually stiffer so you can perform higher. But that process of breaking down and recovering, we can't sense it the way we do in our muscles. Uh, again, you don't really, you know, for most climbers, Hopefully you wake up the next morning and you don't have any pain in your tendons. And so you could then say, well, my tendons are fine. You know, you're not even aware of any issue. My muscles are a little sore, but my tendons are fine. And so well, I'm just going to go climb today because, you know, my muscles are just a little sore. I can still climb at a pretty high level. And what you don't know is, you know, the tendons haven't recovered because as a rule of thumb, connective tissues actually recover more slowly than muscles. And the reason for that is the lack of blood flow. And so uh, it's very easy for a climber who kind of pushes their muscles and, you know, the things that they can sense, you know, again, their muscle recovery, they kind of push that to the limits and they, they, they don't climb so much that they ever get like muscle injuries, muscle pulls, but the tendons are falling behind week after week after week. They're falling behind and they're actually getting a little more degraded on top of existing degradation. That's when the pain starts to reveal. And if you don't dial things back, you continue on your way, uh, you know, climbing on, um, then that's what, that's what can precipitate one of two things. Either in the, in the A2 pulleys, it's often a partial tear or rupture. Uh, and that's when you get that, that's when you get a more acute pain there at the base of your finger um, and it hurts to crimp. Um, and so that's, that's not to be ignored, obviously, because that's more of an acute injury. But in the elbows, you don't tend to get a rupture. What you do is you tend to get into this cycle of failed healing uh, of the, uh, of the, you know, um, the, the tendons here where the finger flexor muscles connect to the, the epicondyl or even shoulder. Um, and so that's when you get into what is called tendinosis. Tendinosis or old school, they would say tendinitis, mm -hmm. which is inflammation of the tendons. But really the tendons don't swell up all that much like a bruised muscle or a broken bone does. The tendons just become more degraded um, and, and painful. 
uh, and uh, the, the medical term most commonly used now is tendinosis, uh, which is a more of a chronic injury. So kind of to wrap this all up, the bottom line is most climbing injuries um, start off as just this low grade overuse type injury um, and kind of maybe a runner's analog to that would be um, somebody gets into running, you know, buys a new pair of shoes, gets, you know, it's New Year's and they set the goal to, you know, I'm going to run a marathon this summer. So they, they start running every day when they had previously not been running every day and they ramp up their mileage really fast. And what do they have in a month or two? They have shin splints or plant, plantar fasciitis. Um, those would be leg type injuries that came about the same way climbers get sore fingers or sore elbows or sore shoulders is, you know, too much too soon or too much too often. Uh, and then on top of that, oftentimes maybe nutrition that's not quite where it should be and maybe not enough, you know, sleep and enough rest days. Uh, and so it's kind of becomes a perfect storm when you have a highly motivated climber, a passionate climber who, if they had the time would climb every day because they love it so much. That's a lot of us. Um, and then you add to that, you know, a tendency climbers tend to do one more rep on the route or one more, you know, burn on the boulder, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, and then maybe if they're really trying to get in shape, maybe they're cutting their diet back in the wrong places. Um, and then having a few too many late nights, if they have work or school, or family or things that, you know, also consume time. Um, and again, you know, then you start to combine those factors. And what do you know, a few months later, you have an injury that, um, unfortunately, if it's ignored, can mean a forced withdrawal from climbing, where you have to just take time off. Um, and we don't like that. We love climbing, <laughs> you know, and so we don't want to go there. Isn't Eric amazing? Yeah. Well, actually, there's two more videos in this series. Check out the next video, Recovering for Sore Tendons Using Exercise. And then also check out part three, where we talk about the nutrition behind recovering your tendons. Links are in the description so you can reference those and check out the blog article, his products that he uses, and be sure to check out his book. It's one of my favorite training books. It was my first training book that I purchased and it really helped me provide structure to my training so I could level up faster. 